SNC's Intelleruptor Pulse Closer Fault Interrupter operates at high voltage. Failure to observe these precautions will result in serious personal injury or death. Some of these precautions may differ from your company's operating procedures and rules. Where a discrepancy exists, follow your company's operating procedures and rules. This video is intended to be used in conjunction with a written instruction sheet included with your product or found online at snc.com. SNC's Intelleruptor Pulse Closer Fault Interrupter is a breakthrough in overhead and underground distribution system protection. The overhead version of the gear is completely self-contained. It is designed to go up in one easy single point lift and features a single ground connection to the base. Typically, installation takes less than two hours. Your Intelleruptor shipment includes a three-pole Intelleruptor fault interrupter, complete with sensors, integral power modules, control group and communication device, if applicable, factory assembled on a single base. The pole mounting bracket is permanently attached to the base. There is also a pad mounted style and a compact style Intelleruptor pulse closer. If your unit shipped with an external power supply, please refer to written instructions for installation of the power supply. Also included, a radio antenna, if applicable, and any optional features. Additionally, two three-quarter inch or 19 millimeter diameter through bolts and four half inch lag screws, a minimum of two inches long and cable ties or electric tape will be needed but are not included. A water resistant envelope contains all necessary written instructions for the device along with an erection drawing. Study this drawing carefully and check the parts lists to verify that all parts are included. Programming software is not included on a disc. It can be downloaded from the SNC Customer Support Portal. The portal can be accessed at snc.com support. Before uncrating the unit, note that either side of the interrupter can be the source or load. However, when supplied with the optional three-phase disconnect, it is usually placed on the load side. Also consider whether the unit has one or two integral power modules. If only one module is present, make certain the lead from the module to the bushing faces the source side. If the unit is pre-configured before installation, the configuration of the X and Y terminals will determine which should be the source side. If it's not pre-configured, the X side is typically faced toward the source. Always follow your company's personal protective equipment guidelines when working with an interrupter pulse closer fault interrupter to uncrate First, cut the plastic cable ties securing the top of the shipping crate. Remove the top along with the support plank. Then remove the cartons containing the protection and control module and the communication module. These modules can have configuration settings uploaded prior to installing the interrupter. See the written instructions for more details. The module should be kept outside the unit and indoors if the interrupter is going to be stored. Note that the battery for the communications module is shipped in the same box as the module but is not installed in the module so it can be easily removed for charging. If the battery will not be installed within six months, it should be charged. Set these aside along with the envelope containing the written instructions. Note that the modules should not be placed directly on the ground. Cut the tie wrap on the lifting brackets. Any user installed communications or programming should be done at this point. If installing the compact cross arm style interrupter, the lifting brackets are at each end of the unit. Attach a suitable sling through the holes in the lifting brackets. Lift the unit until the sling is just taut. Caution! Do not lift the interrupter fault interrupter by the pole units, the base, or any part of the fitting on the base except the lifting brackets. Damage to the unit may result. Now unbolt the fault interrupter base from its skid. The 4x4 shipping supports can remain attached to the base of the interrupter to support the switch outside of the crate. Slowly and carefully hoist the interrupter fault interrupter out of the crate. Do not set the interrupter down on soft or muddy ground as it can damage the indicators. It's now time to prepare the surfaces of connectors, terminal pads, and conductors. Do not wire brush terminal pads. 
wire brushing may scratch the plating. Apply a liberal amount of no oxide E or other suitable aluminum connector compound to the connector surface. Then securely bolt the connectors to the terminal pads. Prepare the conductors using your company's standard operating practices and clamp them in the connectors. Caution! Terminal pads are not intended for dead ending and should only have jumpers attached to them. See instruction sheet 766-510 for further details. Only s &C connectors can be used with the wildlife option. See 766-31 for the connector details and 766-510 for other restrictions. Prepare the wildlife cover to fit the jumper. It's a good practice to use a silicon-based lubricant to make it easier to assemble or remove. On the X-terminal side, attach the upper terminal pad cover to the interrupter housing. It aligns with and engages the lower cover. If necessary, use a piece of tape or a plastic cable tie to hold the upper and lower covers together. Slide the tap cover all the way over the terminal pad cover until it snaps into place. Pins in the terminal pad cover will engage the holes in the tap cover. On a disconnect style interrupter, this piece is installed at the factory. Surge arresters are required on both sides of the unit. Optional surge arresters are typically pre-installed with the unit. If not, see the written instructions for installation details. Surge arresters must be grounded to the interrupter base. A separate ground strap to the pole is not required. Refer to reference drawing RD-6924 included in the detailed instruction manual RD-6949. Drill two 13 16 inch or 20 millimeter diameter holes in the utility pole at the desired height for mounting the unit. The center line to center line distance of the holes is 22 and 3 8 inches or 568 millimeters. Refer to the catalog drawing for more information. Insert two 3 quarter inch or 19 millimeter diameter through bolts in the holes just drilled. Secure only the top bolt loosely with washers under the bolt heads and nuts so the heads of the bolts project approximately 3 inches or 76 millimeters from the face of the pole to engage the interrupter mounting bracket. If you haven't already done so, remove the 4x4 shipping supports. Now, hoist the unit to its mounting height. Guide it so the top through bolt and washer projecting from the pole slips into the top hole of the interrupter mounting bracket. Level the interrupter to align the bottom hole on the interrupter with the bottom hole on the pole. Then insert the lower bolt through the pre-drilled hole and secure with washers as previously mentioned. Now lower the interrupter slightly so it bears on the through bolts. Then fully tighten the through bolts. Install a half-inch lag screw that is a minimum of 2 inches or 51 millimeters long at each of the four corners of the interrupter mounting bracket. When all nuts and lag screws have been fully tightened, remove the hoist from the lifting brackets. Swing down the two lifting brackets. Failure to do so may result in a flashover. Danger! The interrupter fault interrupter base must be connected to a suitable earth ground at the base of the utility pole before energizing and at all times when energized. Failure to observe these instructions can result in serious personal injury or death. Now that the unit is securely on the pole, it's time to ground the base. Do this by solidly connecting one number two AWG copper wire or two number six AWG copper wires or wires having an equivalent cross-sectional area to the grounding lug on the back of the interrupter fault interrupter base. Connect the other end of the wire to a suitable earth ground at the base of the utility pole and bond them to the system neutral, if present. If the system neutral is not present, proper precautions must be taken to ensure the local earth ground cannot be severed or removed. Ground impedance must be 25 ohms or less to properly protect the equipment. The first step in installing the communication module is to install its battery. If the interrupter pulse closer fault interrupter has been in storage for more than six months, 
the battery should be charged. If the interrupter fault interrupter will not be energized for a period longer than three days, the battery should not be installed at this time. To install the battery, first open the compartment, insert the battery, connect the connectors, and push the battery all the way in. Then close the battery compartment cover and secure the locking screw. A radio providing wide area network capability for SCADA applications, if specified, is furnished factory installed in the communication module. See the written instructions to install a different radio. The modules are heavy. Removal and replacement from the ground using an extendo stick is not recommended. Remove and replace the modules from a bucket truck using the module handling fitting attached to a suitable hook stick, typically 8 to 12 feet long. With the module resting on a clean, dry surface, insert the fitting into the module latch. While pushing down on the hook stick, rotate the handling fitting 90 degrees counterclockwise to open the latch. If you have not already done so, remove the plastic covers from the module base in the interrupter fault interrupter base. The covers can be stored in the base for future use. If you're not installing the modules at this time, make sure the covers are securely in place as they protect against wildlife. While standing in the bucket, lift and insert the module into the bay in the interrupter fault interrupter base. For the communication module, match the black arrow on the module to the black arrow on the base. For the protection, match the white arrow on the module to the white arrow on the base. With sufficient force, push up on the hook stick to engage the wiring connectors. Do not push slowly. Then, while pushing upward on the hook stick, rotate the handling fitting 90 degrees clockwise, as viewed from the underside of the base, to close the latch. Remove the handling fitting from the latch. Follow the same process to install the control module. The antenna connector is located on the underside of the interrupter fault interrupter base. Screw the wire whip antenna, which is optional for external communications, into the connector on the base. See the written instructions to install other antennas. Danger! The interrupters, terminal pads, and disconnect blades of disconnect style models may be energized from either side of the interrupter pulse closer fault interrupter and with the interrupters in any position. Before inspecting, servicing, or repairing an interrupter pulse closer fault interrupter or working on the conductors on either side of it, test for voltage using proper high voltage test equipment. Install suitable grounding equipment. Failure to observe these precautions can result in serious personal injury or death. Energize the interrupter pulse closer fault interrupter according to your company's standard operating practice. The installation is now complete and ready to be commissioned according to your utility's standard practices. We hope you have found this video informative. If you have any questions, please visit our website at snc.com.